So again, 10 ball, usually the, the break works best somewhere around the center. I wouldn't necessarily break from the center because that is a lot tougher to hit the one ball square. And by doing so, you put the exact amount of pressure on both the seven and the three ball and you try to avoid that. So you try to, to get more power to one side. It doesn't matter if it's the right or the left side. That is actually, so I usually choose like half, half a diamond to one side and go from there and try to make either a three or seven in the side pocket. And in this case, try to get the, the one ball come towards this pocket. Hit it okay, even though the cue ball got kicked a little bit, but this is something that you, you can never control. This is part of the game and you just have to accept it. So, I'll try to shoot the one in here. And now, I, again, I have to think, do I hold the cue ball, play it really soft, so I can hold it in this area or do I play with authority and try to use the rail as well and come back. But when you shoot it that hard, it makes the one ball much, much tougher. Because if you don't hit that straight in the pocket, if you hit the rail just a little bit, you might miss the one ball. And I'm always a fan of rather playing the ball with pocket speak because that widens the pocket. But still, I'm gonna hit the, the side rail a little bit and, and try to, to either end up straight or, or a little to the left. What I don't want is to be right on top of the three where I cannot reach the cue ball anymore. But again, don't tell yourself, I don't wanna get there. You need to focus on the spots that you want to be at, not a spot that you don't wanna be in. Position was good, but uh, I failed to make it. <laughs> Very fair that he gives me a chance, right? <laughs> so my thoughts are pretty simple here. I guess I can just let the cue ball rolling out of the short rail for the two, three. Here it's a little bit delicate on the four, especially going to the five, right? Because for the five, I got only some spot over there or here. So the Pretty challenging, but let's go for the one. Cue ball comes out of the rail almost straight. With this angle, I can come back with uh, low right to go back in the center. From the center, I have basically all options to handle this four ball. And uh, I mean, I can make a snapshot, take a difficult one, but of course I try to get a pretty precise draw. But too much would be, you know, the worst case. So yeah, that's what you have to try to do. A little bit short, but still okay to handle the four, but problem is five. Let's see if I have a shot from here. Would be a very thin cut in the side. I'm in trouble.
Okay, I make something unusual because I don't feel well with that. I play a safety, keep the cue ball behind the seven, and send this ball around here and having fun uh, watching Ralph dealing with it. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Nice shot. Nice safety, yep. I think it was the right option for Ralph to do that because the percentage of getting position to the five was very, very low. So that's something that you have to keep in mind that when the percentage is like less than 50% or even less than 40, why going there? You know, just play a good, it wasn't an easy safety, but it was a very good chance to to snooker me and, and he did it uh, perfectly. So my first goal is obviously to hit the four. Or because when I make the half, then I would have to hit here. There is a pocket, so that won't work. So I, I could hit it here, but still the path is blocked by the five. So that would mean I would have to hit two rails. And in order to hit it two rails, and then after the carom to hit a rail, I would have to hit really hard. Again, that makes it tough because hitting it hard, the, the ball comes much shorter out of the rail. So, so this way is already impossible for me. So I, I won't go there. Going from here, hitting here, I would I would end up hitting this part, which means I'm, I'm still a little away from the four. And adjusting, I could only by using a lot of follow English, but I'm so close to the side pocket that I probably won't get there either. So, so option two is also no go. Two rails going this way is very tough because I can hardly hit the cue ball, because I have to which is for me almost impossible because I'm one of the shorter guys, so <laughs> with shorter fingers, so, so that makes it tough too. So therefore I try to hit it two rails and yeah, try to hit it here, ideally on this side where I can maybe even make the four and, the, and if I don't make it, if I hit it a little fuller, the four will go here, cue ball will go here, and maybe behind the nine. But it's easier said than done. It's already hard if you have the cue ball here. But to hit two rails first, that makes it even harder. So what I do now is I measure half of the distance between the four and the cue ball. Then I draw a line straight through the pockets. Then take a parallel line, which is the hard part. I might have already docked that one, but let's see. And then use at least two tips of running English, which is, would be right English. And let's see. Let's see if I get there. Nope, way too long. That's due to the new cloth, so that's that's kind of difficult, but that's the way it is. I played a good safety, right? So I can play the four ball, leave a little angle on the five to get out on the seven, eight, nine, eight. Okay. I always like to leave my, all my options often, so I still can draw it over here to take a side pocket or just keep the minimum, just a little bit to the rail and out for the seven over there. Don't have too much angle, so I even if the cue ball goes a little bit there, it's still fine for the eight.
with this angle, it's a little bit hard to pick that right speed because it goes this direction, so I have a very small zone here. So I will force it to go along the tangent line on the rail and out. From there I have a fine angle just to, I mean you see tangent line here, but I can draw it and avoid the contact with the rail.